Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics with the final video on com competitive market equilibrium and looking at a shift inward of the demand curve. Our applied example will be Spain uh, facing the impact on their macro economy, and then we'll look at it from a microeconomic perspective of uh, their second lockdown and um, its impact on their gross domestic product. So the article says by El País, titled Spain's economy will shrink, it will contract more than most other developed nations in 2020, says the International Monetary Fund. This is a result of the coronavirus crisis, output, production of goods and services, expected to decline by 12.8% of GDP, which is an unprecedented figure that is worse, unfortunately, for um, than most other advanced developed nations. So uh, this will be scenario number four. Here we're looking at, uh, we'll call this graph A. And this will be a sector, we're gonna look at a particular sector within the national economy. We're not looking at it from a macroeconomic point of view, but from a microeconomic point of view. So we'll be looking at the market for bars and restaurants within Spain. Okay, so we're looking at this micro element within the national economy, the market for bars and restaurants. So we're gonna measure a quantity of this good and service on the X axis and price on the Y axis. We have a, um, and then we'll go ahead and draw our supply curve, our supply of bars and restaurants. Going this way, I'm just gonna exaggerate this a little bit. S1 equal to the marginal costs of production and then demand decreasing, we have D1 equal to our marginal benefit, all right? So here we are, the intersection of S1 and D1 provides an equilibrium at point A, setting an equilibrium price at P1, so the average price of uh, drinks and food being served uh, within this sector and the equilibrium quantity supplied and demanded at Q1, okay? So we can make a little note here where S1 equals D1, an equilibrium price is established at P1, an equilibrium quantity is established at Q1 where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded and we also notice that since marginal costs equal marginal benefit, it's allocatively efficient. We are producing the combination of goods and services that are desired by society. So MC equals MB, it is allocatively efficient. Right? So consumer and producer surplus is at maximum, social surplus is at maximum. Then um, in March, Spain went into lockdown. It opened up during the summer months in October, it's going into lockdown. So it is mandated that bars and restaurants close, also man mandated that people stay home, which reduces consumption. So those mandates decreases the demand um, in order to protect and save lives, right? The right to life being greater than the right to social liberty. So demand shifts inward from D1 to D2. Okay. So here's D2 equal to marginal benefit two. And at this price of P1, we're holding price constant in the short run. The quantity demanded is at Q2. Okay. So let's make a note that at a price of P1, the quantity supplied is at Q1. Here's quantity supplied, uh, which is greater than the quantity demanded at Q2. 
So since quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded, we have excess supply, which is another word of saying surplus, right? Too much being produced. Now, if we look at uh, quantity supplied at this price, this is the quantity of restaurants and bars providing this good and service. We should also take note of what's happening to the marginal cost and the marginal benefit. At quantity supplied, just to emphasize that, we will go up and we will see here is what is being provided by firms. So that's our marginal cost. And we see it's greater than the decreased demand curve. So there's our marginal benefit. So we see that marginal cost is greater than marginal benefit. And we'll make a note of that here. Okay, so demand has fallen. We're holding price constant at P1. And at P1, we notice that the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. We have excess supply or surplus. Uh, and we also notice that at Q1, the marginal cost of production is greater than marginal benefit. So we have an over allocation of goods and services being provided. This is allocatively inefficient. Okay. Too many uh, restaurants and bars providing good and service that is not demanded um, at that quantity. So when there is surplus or excess supply, that puts downward pressure on price. Price begins to fall, right? and it falls to where D2 equals S1. So here we have this new price being established. All right, at P2, price is falling. And we're reaching a new equilibrium at point C. Maybe I'll just do this in red. And quantity supply and demand are reaching equilibrium at Q3. Okay, so as price falls, the quantity being demanded is increasing. Perhaps households uh, switching over to um, ordering in food from restaurants, so takeout services increasing uh, by restaurants, uh, but they're, char they're charging a lower price for that service. Um, and as a result of that fallen price, the quantity supplied of bars and restaurants is decreasing from Q1 to Q3 or from point A to point C until we reach a new equilibrium at point C. So um, the third point is reaching equilibrium. Price is falling from P1 to P2. And as price falls, we see that the quantity being supplied is falling from Q1 to uh, Q3. And we see that the quantity being demanded is increasing, according to the law of demand, from Q2 to Q3. So where S1 equals D2, we've achieved a new equilibrium, right? At a price of P2 and a new quantity at Q3. And it's also allocatively efficient because MC equals MB or MB2. MC1 equals MB2. All right, so the, this is kind of my little outline here to explain what I'm going to discuss in my analysis. Uh, part one, looking at the initial supply and demand, the equilibrium price is established, then the impact of a decrease in demand as a result of the mandate for restaurants to close their doors. Uh, to not provide service indoors, uh, but they can continue to provide takeout services. That creates excess supply, that puts downward pressure on price. And there we see the price mechanism taking effect with an increase in the quantity demanded and a decrease in quantity supply until we reach the new equilibrium at S1 equals D2. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper exam. As can be seen, we have a, a graph Graph A, illustrating the market for bars and restaurants in Spain. And we're measuring quantity on the x-axis, price on the y-axis. We have an upward sloping supply curve according to the law of supply, labeled S1, which is equal to our marginal cost of production. 
we have a downward sloping demand curve labeled D1 equal to our marginal benefit. And at point A, where S1 equals D1, an equilibrium price is established at P1, an equilibrium quantity at Q1, uh, where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. And we'll also notice that at point A, the marginal cost is equal to the marginal benefit, so it's allocatively efficient. Consumer and producer surplus are maximized. Social surplus is at maximum. Then as a result of the government mandates to uh, close uh, bars and restaurants and requiring people to stay home uh, as a result of the, the right to life being greater than the, the right to social liberty, demand decreases from D1 to D2. Um, we're going to hold price constant at P1. We notice that P1, that the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded at Q2. Thus, we have excess supply or surplus. As a result of the surplus, that puts downward pressure on price. Price begins to fall from P1 to P2. And as a result of that, we see that there's an increase in the quantity demanded along the new demand curve from Q2 to Q3, or from point B to point C. And the fall in price also leads to a decrease in the quantity supplied from point A to point C, a movement along the supply curve, um, quantity supply decreasing from Q1 to Q3. Where S1 equals D2 provides a new equilibrium at point C with an equilibrium price at P2 and equilibrium quantity at Q3. Uh, at Q3, quantity supply equals quantity demanded and marginal cost equals marginal benefit. Okay. Um, we also don't want to forget when we analyze this, and I forgot to mention this in my analysis, that when the demand falls, we look at price being held constant and the quantity supplied at P1, we see that the marginal cost of production is greater than marginal benefit. So here we have an over allocation of goods and services versus what is desired by society. Okay, And that will, again will lead to the price falling to reach the new equilibrium that's allocatively efficient. And that's it. Um, please, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.